There are two types of triangles we look at when we talk about special right triangles. There's the 30-60-90 triangle and the 45-45-90 degree triangle. So if you're given enough information to know that a triangle you're looking at falls into one of these two special triangle categories, then you only need one of its sides to figure out the rest because they have special relationships. So with the 45-45-90 triangle, you have two angles that are congruent and therefore the two sides that correspond with those angles, like the sides opposite those angles, are also congruent. So we call those x and then the comparison to the hypotenuse would be x square root 2. So if you know one side, you can find all of them knowing it's a 45-45-90 triangle. If it's a 30-60-90 triangle, they have a different relationship. The side across from the smallest angle is the smallest side, so that's x. Then the hypotenuse is 2 times the smallest side, so that's 2x. And then the side across from the middle angle, the 60 degree angle, is x square root 3. So the way I keep these straight is the 2, the square root of 2, 1 is involved with the one that has two angles that are congruent. And the square root of 3, 1 over here is involved with the one that has a 30 degree angle. So I think about the 3's go together and the square root of 2 goes with the one that has two angles congruent. But that's just a way to help you remember the setup. If you know a triangle is special, a special right triangle, you can use these relationships with the sides to figure out missing sides. So let's look at some examples of both types. So first let's just look at 45, 45, 90 and try a few examples. For number one, I'm given the hypotenuse. I know enough to know that that's 45, so therefore that other one would have to be 45 to add up to 180, so I can figure out x and y. So if you're given the hypotenuse is 3 square root 2, and we know that the relationship of our sides of our 45, 45, 90 triangle would be x, x, and then x square root 2. So you have to keep in mind this relationship when you're solving the problem. So if the hypotenuse is 3 square root 2, that would just mean x equals 3. So that makes y and x both equal to 3. Because it goes back to the sides would be equal hypotenuse is that number times the square root of 2. Let's look at number 2. This time I'm given a leg or a side, not the hypotenuse, and it's 2 square root 2. <clears throat> so I know that if these angles are equal, which they are, they're both 45 degrees, that y would also have to equal 2 square root 2 because the legs of my triangle will be equal, and the hypotenuse is that number times the square root of 2. So x is equal to 2 square root 2 times the square root of 2, which is 2 square root 4, which would reduce to give us just 4. Since the square root of 4 is equal to 2, 2 times 2 is just equal to 4. So x equals 4, and y equals 2 square root 2. Let's look at number 3. On this one, I'm given a leg of my triangle is equal to 4, and I meant to put in here that that would be, or no, I actually meant to leave that out. Because if you're given the legs are equal, notice on this figure none of the angles are written right there, but if you know these legs are equal, that's enough to know that these would have to also be equal, and then they would therefore have to be equal to 45, both of them. And so we know this is a special right triangle if we know it's a right angle and the sides are equal, so it's an isosceles right triangle. And so we have a 4, the other leg would also be 4, and the hypotenuse would just be 4 square root 2. So sometimes they're very straightforward and pretty simple. Number 4, you're given the hypotenuse is 6, and we're trying to find the legs. So if you're given the hypotenuse is a nice whole number like 6, you would say 6 would equal x square root 2. Like in our scenario, with any 45, 45, 90 triangle, your legs are equal, so we call them the same letter when we're thinking about it. And then this one is x square root 2. So to figure out the legs, you would set what they give you for the hypotenuse equal to the x square root 2 and solve for x. So if we divide by the square root of 2, they might leave it like that. But in math, we like to rationalize a denominator. So when you have a radical in the denominator, you have to get rid of it. So we multiply the numerator and denominator by the square root of 2 to help make this denominator come out evenly. And then we could just simplify that to 3 square root 2. 
So once I do one leg, the other leg is also equal to 3 square root 2. So on a test, I would bet they would probably try to rationalize it, but if they left it like that, just be aware they might leave it like that. Just depends. So let's look at some examples of 30, 60, 90 triangles. So these have special relationships that are different than 45, 45, 90, but they compare in a similar way. So for instance, on this triangle, you're given 60 and 90, so you know that one has to be equal to 30. And then the 30 degree angle is the smallest angle. So it's across from the smallest side of the triangle. So 30 is across from the side that from our setup on that first board that you've already written down, this is the thing you have to kind of memorize. Across from 30 will be my x, hypotenuse is 2x, and the cross from 60 will be x square root 3. You have to somehow get that in your brain so that when you're looking at a triangle, you can remember how they relate to one another to figure out the ones that are missing. <clears throat> so 8 is across from 30. So if 30 has the 8 right there, 8 is equal to x. And so Let's see, my hypotenuse would be 2 times x, so 2 times 8 would be 16. And then my side across from 60 is x square root 3. So if x was equal to 8 for this one, y will be equal to 8 square root 3. So knowing the setup helps you fill in the missing sides. And we only need one side to do that since we know it's one of these triangles. Let's look at number 2. So on this one, you're looking for the side that we consider x, or like the smallest side, and we're looking for the one that's across from 60. You are given the hypotenuse, so in terms of our side relationships, this one is equal to 2 times the smallest side, which is going to be this one. I know it's a little confusing that I've labeled it y, but we'll fill it in. It's just that they're different, so I can't label them both x right there. And so let's say two, if that 8 square root 5 is equal to 2x, and I have to solve for x, I have to divide by 2. And so x is going to be 4 square root 5. x is what I'm talking about as the smallest side of my triangle, or the shortest. And so that's across from the smallest angle. So y is actually equal to 4 square root 5. And then we just need the one that's across from 60 degrees. So across from 60 degrees is x square root 3. So I've got to take that value, 4 square root 5, and multiply it by the square root of 3. So I just get 4 square root 15 for x. You could use other letters if it helps, like a or b. They just labeled them x and y for these examples. All right, so number 3. We are given the one, the side across from the 60 degree angle. So if you're looking at your triangle and you have that side to go by, what I do is set that one equal to x square root 3 because across from my 60 degree angle is always x square root 3. So if that's equal to x square root 3 and I need to find x, I can divide by the square root of 3. So x would just equal 5. And in x, I'm talking about the one across from the 30 degree angle. So across from 30 is actually the letter y in this problem. So y would equal 5. And then x in this case is my hypotenuse. So it's 2 times the short side. So that would just be 10. For number 4, we're given the hypotenuse. And we're looking for the short side and the middle side. And so the hypotenuse is 2 times the short side. So that makes this one pretty simple. We can divide by 2, so this one's going to equal 5. And then this one will just be 5 square root.